Hi, welcome back to a 10 minute video session on how to find roots of a function. Uh, if you think you can, you can learn this stuff in 10 minutes, uh, that's pretty good. But typically I'm expecting that you already know some of it, but you just want to make sure how the method works this is supposed to be a review. So let's start. The idea is the following. I'm given some function f of x. So let us say for our example, uh, e to the 0, 1 x cos x something like that and I want to find where does f of x go to 0. That is I want to find find x naught such that f of x naught equal to 0. So before I tell you how the Newton Raphson, why the Newton Raphson method works, I'm just going to tell you how the Newton Raphson method works. It's very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write an iterative procedure. And it goes like this, xn plus 1 equal to xn minus f of x divided by df dx at x equal to x n. That's it. So <coughs> this is the basic setup for how the procedure works. This is your most important equation and you should memorize this. It's very, very useful. Okay. So let's see how this works. So what we do is step one, find uh, f prime of x. In our case, for our example, it looks like 0 0.1 e to the 0 0.1 x cos x minus e to the 0 0.1x sin x. Then set up our iteration scheme which says um, xn plus 1 equals xn minus e to the 0 0.1xn cos xn divided by 0 0.1 e to the 0 0.1xn cos xn minus e to the 0 0.1 xn sin xn. Okay. Then start with a guess. So I'm going to pick xn equal to 0 0.7. Sorry, x1 equal to 0 0.7. That's my first guess. So now Substitute into the right hand side, that is I am going to take that put for xn to find xn plus 1. Then take this, substitute there and you will find xn plus 2 and then substitute there back again, you will find xn plus 3 and so on. Right? So let us try. If I put x1 equal to 0.7, I will get x2 equal to 0 0.7, that is xn, minus e to the 0 0.07, that is this guy, 0 0.1 times 0 0.7, cos 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.1 e to the 0 0.07, cos 0 0.7, minus e to the 0 0.07, sin 0.7. See what I did, right? I took this value, plugged it in there. Of course, you can simplify this and all that. Now, we are ready to compute x2, x3 and so on. So, what I am going to do is, I have set this up in Mathematica for you to see. So, let us see what it looks like. The main function I want you to look at is this guy. Look at this function. Can you see it looks like xn plus 1, which is called x net equal to x n minus e to the point 1 xn cos xn divided by blah blah blah. Okay. So, my first value for xn is 0.7. Let us see what I will get. So, it tells me the next value must be 2.0417. So, x2 is 2.040714 or something like that. Let us check 2.04179. Sorry. 
zero four one seven nine. So I'm going to take that, plug it into the right hand side. That's easy to do here. So I'm going to take that, take this, control copy, and then put it up here. Control V. You can see I got like ten digits. So I do the next one. And then I do shift enter and I get 1.5556. So I go control copy and I enter that as a new input. So every time I use the old one to get a new one, 1.5782. Control copy and then I go up here and I paste it here and then I do. The next one. Hey, wait a minute. It, it's almost 1.5708. Let's see what happens. I again got that same thing. Let's see whether this is slightly different. So by now you can see that my values are not changing at all. Well, maybe they are a little bit. Oops. But for all practical purposes, up to four decimal places, I got the answer already. Let us see if I can get more decimal places. Look at that. I got the answer correct to something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 decimal places. You can check that. If I take this number and I plug it back in, it's exactly the same. So I got 16 decimal places, xn equals, oops, that's what I wanted, not that, xn equals 1.5708 blah, 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 blah. I can write up to 16 decimals. If you do one more iteration, you will get 32 decimal places. If you do one more iteration, you will get 64 decimal places accuracy. I mean, you can go on like that. It will get more and more and more accurate every time doubling the accuracy. But this is how the method works. So you can see that it's a very simple idea. All you have to do is just go on doing this thing Take the left hand side, plug it into the right hand side and keep iterating. Okay. Until it stops changing. That means f of x equal to 0. That's what is going on. Okay. This is how Newton Raphson works. It's a very simple idea. In one dimension, it's not a big deal. In multiple dimensions, it, it does give you some uh, issues and we'll talk about that uh, later.